Hey, Brad. How was your Wednesday? Hi, it's good, Scott. Hey, everybody, can you hear me okay? I want to make sure that you can see my desktop and that you can hear me all right. So if you want to just shoot off an answer in the question area, I would appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. So again, my name is Brad Williams. I'm one of the managing partners here at Trade Ideas. Seems like I've been here forever. It's a true labor of love. Uh, we create incredible technology. Let me just kind of run through a small little PowerPoint presentation, just a couple slides, just to kind of give an overview of what we're going to do. I'll dive into a little product demonstration and, and keep it interactive. Give me some questions. Tell me the direction you want me to go, and I'll be more than happy to to kind of go in that direction. Absent of any questions, I'll just kind of take you on my own little tour. So I've got the question panel up on my other monitor. If you guys do that, I'll kind of periodically um, take a look over there. Start off with our disclaimer. We are an incredible technology provider, but what we are not is a registered investment advisor. So please do not seek our advice for investment advice. We have no idea of your financial constraints and your account size. So you really do need to talk to someone that does have all that information in mind when you're talking about an investment strategy. A couple different slides right here, guys. We've been doing this for about 16 years. We focus specifically on idea generation. That is what stocks should you be looking at right now? What stocks should you be considering for your trading or investments? And we're delivering all this information to you in real time throughout the trading day. It's also a piece of software that you can use aftermarket to do your uh, stock scanning and to try to find the stocks that are in play the next day. Uh, but the reality is that you can do that all you want, but you can never really predict what's going to be happening. And based on the technology that we've created, we can deliver you these real-time ideas. We scan every single tick of every stock in the market. So we're listening to all the, the exchanges, all the data gets ingested into our data center in San Diego, where we compile it. We we database it, and the thing that we do, which is really unique, is we create new data in real time as we're bringing all this data in. And that data allows you, it really allows the stocks to jump to the, the top of the windows and to the top of your mind for trading consideration. Um, some of those different types of filters that we have are volume related, price related, a lot of price action. Uh, when something interesting happens, we know it because we keep those statistical baselines of every normalized behavior. We know how much volume typically trades through a stock on all the different time frames. We know how much a stock typically moves. And that's each individual stock because they all have their own respective patterns. And that's what we call metadata when we create this new uh, type of data. And through, as I'm showing you the software and going through the different channels and the different windows, I'll highlight and point out some of this unique data that, that really does allow you to create some new experiences and trade ideas. You can do a lot of what you can do in other applications here, but you can do a lot of other unique things as well. It's a real platform, if you will. So with this particular uh, piece of software, you can embark upon strategy creation, create your own strategies. You can configure strategies, uh, update them, if you will, um, and also do some analysis. We have a backtesting tool that we developed about 10 years ago that's a little bit unique. It's an event-based backtesting tool. So you develop a strategy and implement a set of trading rules with that strategy. And then you can see based on the odds maker how that would have performed in the market had you executed each one of those signals. And then finally, I'll talk a little bit about Brokerage Plus, which are, is our strategy execution module. It allows you to really just be a click away from executing any signal inside of the software couple of different windows I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to talk uh, in detail about all of them, but this slide right here does highlight the three main windows that really light up the data. The alert window, which is denoted by the A in the upper left-hand corner, it's an event-based window. When events occur, like a new high or crossing a moving average, something like that, it's going to appear in that window, provided all the filters uh, that you specified in there are satisfied. And then we have below that our multi-strategy window. It's a little smaller in stature on this slide, but it's a lot more powerful because it allows you to incorporate any number of different alert windows, all with their own unique filter set and strategy into a single container. So this window that's down at the bottom could have five different strategies all running in it. And depending upon what's happening in the market, it's gonna go ahead and bring that to your awareness. And then over on the right-hand side is our unique top list. It's well, it can be similar to a, a normal rank list of stocks, but it does give you the ability to really do some additional things. And I'll talk about that 
uh, as we go through some of the channels. Other windows that are important to have for a platform, you have to have charting, you have to have, be able to see the historical representation in addition to what's happening right now. We have a compare count, which is super unique to trade ideas. Uh, it's kind of obscure. It allows you to create two different, put two different strategies in this window and essentially pit them against each other. Best to have them kind of inverses of each other. So this one right here is just new highs versus new lows. You can really see the breadth of the market. And then the bottom right-hand window is our single stock window, another great tool that really allows you to dive deep into a particular stock and have an understanding of what all of these special values are. Some of the unique values are unique filters to trade ideas, in addition to you know, how much is the stock up for the day, how much volume has uh, been traded in that stock. Price alerts. So the price alerts are extremely important. It's like one little bullet on the, the, the feature set of available things that you can do in trade ideas, but any good trader has a sense of awareness about them and, and you have a sense of feel about the market, or at least you will develop that if you've been in the market long enough. And using the price alerts allows you to just use the visual representation of the chart and put on it some thresholds, if you will. Essentially, if a stock is gonna cross a particular price point, you're gonna be alerted to that. So you could bring up a symbol, pull it up on a chart, highlight an area that you feel like if it crosses this, this is something I wanna be alerted to, and then minimize it after that and just let it work. So you can go about your business, go about seeking out the stocks that you wanna um, see how they're doing during the day, but when something actually happens based upon how you've uh, configured it, it'll go ahead and pop up and, and give you that information. You can click on it, it'll pull it up on the chart again, and you can make your trading decision. Price alerts, extremely, extremely valuable tool inside of the software. One of the things we're gonna be doing with the, with the price alerts, and I'll just go back real quick, since this is the, the Q&A webinar, we talked a little bit about some of the features that are on the horizon. Uh, we're gonna be incorporating mobile notifications along with email notifications uh, to these price alerts. So you'll have a little bit more of an advantage in being able to receive this information if you're not sitting directly at your computer. All right, so this right here is a little illustration of our event-based backtesting. If there's a little bit of time in here, I'll, I'll take you through that and show you how you can take a strategy and optimize it and uh, manipulate it so that it will perform better in the, in the market. And then finally, this is our AI and brokerage automation tool. So AI, we have artificial intelligence in the software. Every day we go through a variety of different strategies the computer does anyway, optimizes them. Uh, and then the next day you're presented with a variety of strategies. We don't know what symbols are gonna be triggered out of that, or if in fact even a, a particular strategy will uh, develop a trade, but this is sitting there the next day waiting for a signal to happen. When it does, you're alerted in real time to a, an intelligent idea, uh, all based upon our back testing and our statistical modeling. Uh, and then with Brokerage Plus, you have the ability to either manually send that order to the market, or you can turn on some of the automation and have these AI signals automatically sent to the market. In addition, you can create a strategy and have that strategy automated through Brokerage Plus. So those are all the different things you can do uh, with the software. It kind of took about 10 minutes to kind of give that little overview, but now let's kind of, let's just dig into it and take a look around. So we have two different iterations of our software. We have our application downloadable version. Uh, it's a Windows PC uh, application. And then we also have a very robust web-based version of the software. And we've done some modifications to that recently. And as we get into the AI, I'll, I'll bring that over and show you uh, what we've done to it. So right here, uh, I'm looking over at my channel bar and I've got the pre-market channel, it says on. So th these are the windows that I'm looking at. This is something that I may look at in the pre-market to get an idea of what's gapping up, what's gapping down or what's moving. Again, it's use utilizing two different alerting windows. We've got our top list, which is a ranked list of stocks. Now this is giving me a ranked list of stocks based upon how much the stock is gapping up or down based on a percentage value. So it's giving me, if I right click in here and I go to time frame and go over to historical date, oh, wrong one, time frame, set record count. This is telling me that I'm bringing in 200 symbols from the server. That means it's the top 200 gappers in the top window and it's bringing in the 
the top 200 gapper downs in the bottom window. But once those symbols are in this window, you can further manipulate the data. You could manipulate it based upon you know, the earnings date. Let's see what stocks have the earnings that have passed us. If I scroll down and go to, to a near zero, we're gonna see stocks that had earnings yesterday, stocks that had earnings this morning. You know, so I can sort on that. That's probably not the best way to sort it. If I did it on the gap dollar value, you know, I could do that. So now I'm sorting this, this window here based upon stock gapping up on a dollar value. But remember, every symbol that's in this window right here, all 200 of them are based upon their percentage value. So this is how you can get pretty sophisticated with a, with a top list window. So let me do this. Let me show you a top list window. I'm just going to go to new top list. And I'm going to go to my pre-configured strategies right here. And I'm going to go to my gainers. So let's just bring in a top percentage gainers window and hit OK. I'm just going to replace that right down here. OK, so this is my top percentage gainers, but I want to do a couple of different things with it. So if I want to just see the stocks that are, you know, have a huge percentage move, I can bring that in here uh, and, and see that. I think I have this thing set to a bookend. So this is another unique way to look at data. Let me stretch it out. So in this window, I'm looking at stocks that have moved up incredibly on a percentage basis. But if I scroll down, I'm looking at stocks that have moved down a tremendous amount on a percentage basis. I don't want that right now. So I'm gonna go back in and configure it. I'm just gonna go into the window specific filters. And I want my change from the close to be up, let's say 2%. Okay, so now everything in this window is going to be up at least 2%. So I'm going to start showing you how you can build a top list that becomes meaningful for you. I mean, this is meaningful. It's giving you some information. It's letting you know what stocks are doing great, but are you able to trade those? Maybe, maybe not. So let's go in and let's add some data points. So let's do something like change over five minutes. And I'll just bring in the percentage value and then also let's do i don't know let's go change over 15 minutes so i want to have both of these in here so i'm going to show the column and hit okay so i didn't really change the strategy i'm just adding a couple data points over here so now what i can do is i can do some interesting things now maybe i want to see out of this list of stocks that are you know up strong for the day you know which stocks may have been pulling back Okay, so now I've got a couple, again, it's after hours, so it's not gonna be as meaningful. Um, these stocks right here, these five guys are pulling back. But let me do this, let me change the color coding of this so I can get a better idea of that. And I'm just gonna quickly put in some breakpoints. This could be confusing if it's the first time you do it, but I promise you, if you set a couple of these special colors up, it's super easy. So my breakpoints are just gonna be 5% up, 2.5% up, zero and because we can have negative values too and that's what we're looking at up here i'm going to go negative 2.5 and negative 5 and essentially what i did was i set breakpoints up and the breakpoints are going to be for this color gradient this pre-configured color gradient that i'm going to use and so now you can see it just basically assigned a color to each one of those numerical values and as i hit ok now i've got a gradient here where if the stock is up, it's going to be green. If the stock is down, it's going to be red. So now I've got stocks that are strong for the day, but yet pulling back. And now maybe this is not the right time. Maybe I want to see how did this do, say, a half hour uh, before the market closed. So in that case, that would be 1230 my time on the West Coast. So I'll hit that. And so now I've got this window. Had I been looking at it, you know, this is uh, the stocks that are up and pulling back. Now, one of the great things about the window is we make it really easy for you to modify this stuff. You know, if I want to go in, go to configure, I want to change something, you know, I can just, I'll go, a bit, go back and show you. I'm left clicking on that icon to be able to change the um, change from the close percentage. And I can do that just right here from this value. But I don't really want to do that. What I want to do is I want to, well, I want to cancel it and I want to duplicate this window. So now I have a carbon copy of it but I want to get the inverse of it. So I want to go into configure and I'm going to flip it. And that's, it's essentially, it's going to go through and it's going to take the filters that are pertinent and flip them. 
In this case, there probably aren't, there's that change percentage filter. So that's important and it'll flip that for me. So if I hit okay, and I should probably name it right as well. This is gonna be um, down a bunch with a bounce. So without having to even configure it, I just did that flip and I was able to get that window that's giving me information uh, about that. And uh, I do get that, the ability to then sort on those values. Now I could do it on the five minute like I have here, or maybe I'm a, a longer term, I want a longer term view of it. Uh, I can do it in this fashion. And then I can just right click if I want to um, custom color that, I'll need to do that and I would set the breakpoints to do it. I'll just pass on it because we have a lot of other things that I want to show you. So that's just part of the top list. As you peruse the different channels, like social media, for instance, you just find a channel that interests you and you can go take a look at the different uh, windows that we've created for that workspace. And typically each workspace will have a variety of different windows uh, involved. This is a nice channel because it when we're talking about social data, this is where we take what's unique to trade ideas and we find the statistical baseline. We know what's normal amount of chatter uh, on stock twists regarding a particular stock. And when that stock starts to get talked about a lot more, we treat it just like volume. So we have a way of knowing uh, based upon the chatter threshold when something really starts to light up. And so these guys here, Lyft for instance, is being talked about 1,000, 200% of normal. So it's an incredibly, you know, but, but then if I go to, let's just click on it right here and let's pull up the single stock and I can look at the relative volume for that. The relative volume is another very interesting data point that we, that we track. The relative volume takes a look at the stock's current volume at this point in time and gives me a ratio letting me know how does it compare to its normal value. A one would be normal, two would be two times normal. So this is, you know, two times or 200% of its normal um, social volume or no normal volume, social volumes even more through the roof on that. So on all of these different channels, there are little Easter eggs like that where we're highlighting some of the filters and some of the unique data aspects uh, within trade ideas. So let me see what other um, window, because I wanted to, I wanted to show you. So here's an alert window. The alert window, like I mentioned, was a, an event window, but let me, let's start from scratch and let's build something a little unique. I want to build like a climactic window, something that's letting me know if a stock is uh, really starting to accelerate upward and gain some momentum. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to open up a, an alert window. I'm going to do this from scratch. You can get, kind of see kind of the process involved in doing it going to double click on that start from scratch. It's going to erase all my settings. So now I'm basically starting with a clean slate. Now I have to decide what type of events do I want this thing to, to look for. Um, it's a climactic move. It doesn't need to be the high of the day, but it does need to show some upward type of movement. So for something like this, I could do a, like a running up now. That's a nice, uh, nice alert that's looking at that one minute candle and when something starts to aggressively move, it'll go ahead and uh, trigger that alert. So I'm gonna select that one, but I'm gonna do something a little more unique. I'm gonna add a couple different alerts to this particular strategy. I'm gonna do the heartbeat and I'm gonna do the heartbeat. It, it's a confusing alert, but it's essentially an alert that's just gonna trigger every five minutes. It's not, it's not anything special, but what's gonna be special about it are the filters that I employ when I create the strategy. So the, the filters are gonna paint the picture. This is just an event. So let me find another one, maybe like a five minute high. That would satisfy the type of criteria that I'm looking for here. So I'm gonna add that. That's good. I, I don't think I need anything else. Maybe the five minute wide range bar, when I start to add the filters to indicate that it's gonna be bullish in nature, that could be interesting too. So let's just stop there as far as our trigger events. And now let's go into our filters. And the filters you have to use in combination with your search tab if they're not visible right here in front of you. So the first thing we're gonna do is do our price filter because everybody should probably put a price filter on. What are you comfortable trading? So I'm just gonna keep it between two and uh, $200. I think average daily volume is another important one. I've got an, a five day average daily volume. That's fine for this purpose. So 150,000. Um, shares on average. I want to make sure that that stock on average does that. And we do, we have some other great 
filters in here that you would never know about unless you actually took the time to go through it and to go through this list. So if you keep this blank and you just scroll down, you can even make this window bigger if you want. And you can go through this list. And if you find something that you want to know more about, like for instance, that running up now, you can just hit that help button and it's going to spawn our web page here and it's going to take you right to the particular alert or filter, whatever it was that you select, and it's going to give you that full definition. So read it, make yourself aware of this because this is really what makes this software unique are all these different alerts and filters that you can manipulate. So this is a master page. It can be completely overwhelming, but if you just click on one of the signals or filters, it'll just drill you right into it and you can read up about it. All right, so let's go back to what I forgot what I was doing here. So we put in our, our price filter, we put in our average daily volume. Um, yeah, so let's do, we have this great um, set of filters called consecutive candles. And that's essentially on these various different time frames, allowing you to determine or to specify how many consecutive candles are moving in a particular direction. So in this case right here, I want to have say three up five minute candles in a row. I, I do a lot on the five minute time frame, so I like using that particular filter. So let's do that. And let's just say I want to have a minimum of at least three candles that are up uh, in a row. That's giving me that upward movement that I'm looking for here. But also I want to make sure that, you know, over the last five minutes, five minute change right here, that we've got some upward movement as well, right? And so for that five minutes, Let's make sure that that thing is going to go up at least a quarter of a percent. And these are all things that you can change after the fact when you run a history and see exactly what signals uh, were created with that. Um, let's go into the percentage change for 15 minutes. That's this guy right here. Let's add the filter. We want this one to be a little bit bigger. We want this to en en encompass the three uh, up candles that we have. And so for this case, let's make it a little bigger. Let's make it kind of like three times that five minute one. So let's make it 0.75%, almost a full percent up in 15 minutes. And then the last one that I want to do, I want this thing to be bouncing off or above its 20 period moving average. So I don't want it to be um, below it. I want to have some type of um, solid momentum, some bullish indications that it's going to be um, a solid move. So in this case here, let's just go 20 minute do this. Let's go to SMA. And on the SMA, we're going to go for the five minute 20 period. So let's add that filter right there. So on a five minute chart, uh, this is 20 periods going back. So 25 minute candles, and we're keeping that moving average. And in this case here, I want it to be at least a percent above it. So this is this is what I did. I just kind of built this climactic window from scratch right here. So this is a, a climactic up move. And then once you build that, in order to, to see if it's something that is, is viable for you, you don't need to sit here and wait in real time for, for something to come through. You can just go ahead and hit today. In this case, let's go back in the, in the meat of the market. Maybe a half hour before. Let's pull it up. So this is showing us that climactic. You can see where that blue arrow is and where that climactic. To make it a real strategy, you certainly may want to put in some additional filtering in it. But this is a this is a notification. This is just something to alert me to something that's that's moving uh, up in a direction that I that I want. So boy, the market's been kind of beaten up here a bit. A little a lot of volatility. All right, so that's our climactic move. And again, like I showed you on the top list window, if we just duplicate this, move it over to the side, go to configure, I can do the very same thing I did before. This is gonna be a little bit more uh, complex because it's flipping alerts and it's gonna flip the respective filters. So now I could leave it like that, but I can just now say climactic down move. So now I have two different windows, one looking for solid up moves, one looking for solid down moves. Uh, and now what I can do is I can bring it into our multi-strategy window. So here's our blank container, and this is how you drop in. I'm just going to drop in these two different strategies, and you go to the collaborate area. You hit copy. So that's the collaborate is very much like our, our cloud save, but it's something that we developed over 10 years ago, and it's a, the mechanism from which um, 
you can drop it inside of this multi-strategy window. So if you right click on strategies, go to new strategy and hit collaborate, all I need to do is paste in that link that's in my clipboard and I have the climactic up move in there. Let me do the same thing here with the climactic down move, copy it. And like anything in our software, if you do something a couple times, it's just gonna be a, that much easier for you when you do it. Paste it, so now I have both strategies in here and I can now configure it to where I want my color scheme to be a certain way. So for my climactic up move, let's just make this a green text, nothing fancy. For my climactic down move, we could do something like maybe a pink background, you know, something like that. So you can get really, really, you know, colorful with how you want to set this up. And when you start to have like 20 different strategies in here, it's really important that you have it set up in a, in a fashion or a color scheme that really makes sense and is intuitive to you. So I'm going to peek over here at the questions and see if uh, we got anything going on here. I see Waleed. Yeah, don't worry about the curated. That's going to be coming. We're going to be uh, releasing the curated channel uh, for our test drive. So everybody will get to um, uh, experience it there. And then we have to do a little development work to make it something that's only going to be uh, for our premium subscribers. But yeah, so we'll have access to that here this coming week through our test drive. All right, so I, I don't want to get caught up in the weeds, but I do want to show you, you know, all this good stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this multi-strategy window, and I actually made a, a little better one, climactic singles. So let's go ahead and signal. Let's share that. I'm going to go ahead and copy it, and then let's also load it. So I'm going to drop this in the chat. This is a, a five minute climactic signals. And if you go into the strategies, you can see we're looking for uh, down reversals, down moves, up reversals, up moves. You know, so just putting in a lot of flavor into this window. And this is how you really develop a really nice uh, multi-strategy window. And then once you have something like this that you like, you can then just go ahead and pin it. And now if I go ahead and peruse some other channels, I really like the Alpha Predator channel. I'm gonna have that window here um, on my, on my workspace for me to be able to use. If I wanted to, I could create my own layout, go into my channel bar and create my own channel, put my own imagery in here and, and put my own cloud link, my whole workspace. And so uh, that's something that you can do as you get more comfortable with developing your own windows. So Alpha Predator, I really love this channel. This is one that's always producing ideas, even when the market's crashing, you know, there's always something that's bucking the trend. And this is a great channel to, uh, to find those types of opportunities. You know, like something like IEA, I don't really know much about this. I did see it coming through a ticker today. It looks like it's been incredibly beaten up. Um, you know, something like this is where I look to it and I go, okay, well, if this stock actually does approach the $3 area, uh, maybe I want to take notice of it. It doesn't mean I want to buy it. It doesn't mean I want to, uh, to necessarily trade it. it. It depends, right? And so putting that type of threshold on there allows me to go, go ahead and focus my energy on so many other different things, completely taking my mind off that until it's something that's pertinent, something that I may want to do something with. So thanks, Wally. Let me, let me drop it in there before I forget, because I will forget. All right, so that should be available for you guys to extract out of um, the chat area. It's a cloud link and you can take that cloud link and you just open up, you can either do it here through uh, the file mechanism, load from cloud or on our channel bar, we have a my cloud area. If you have this in your clipboard, it's gonna automatically appear in this little box down here. But let's say you just grabbed it right now and you can hit control V, you drop it in there and it'll just load it up for you. So I've got another another copy of it right here. So that's how it works. The cloud super super interesting. I mean, if you don't, if you're not aware of the cloud, you have to make that kind of like your second best friend because with the cloud, it allow, allows you to save your windows or your workspaces or even multiple windows. Like for instance, if I come over to my cloud, I've got um, high volume movers. So let's just let me load that up. And that loaded these three windows right here. It didn't clear my workspace. I could have had it do that. Um, but here it just loaded three windows. 
I could have made those three windows something that I pull up from my channel bar. So it's all interrelated. When you know how to do something in the software, um, it's all interrelated to other components, either in the same piece of software or bringing it over here uh, on our web-based version. Web-based version, really, it's the same thing. You know, it's like you can see the application here and the web version here. Um, it's a little bit more constrained um, but the, the flexibility of it is just amazing. So if you go to like, for instance, the Alpha Predator channel, you can take any of these, um, any of these little channel, or not channel, but any of these windows and just pop them out. So in that case, I just popped it out and now I've got just that window. Uh, so, you know, pretty flexible if you know how to use the, the cloud mechanism. It all works here in just the same way. So one thing while I'm here on the uh, the web version, I'll show you real quick what we've done to it um, recently. We're always working on it. We, we're working on both versions, but what we like to do is we like to develop functionality in the application, make sure it's it's usable, it's it's the way that we want it, and then we port it over to the web, and that's been our, our methodology. So let's bring in a channel window and close that. And we've got the Omni AI channel on here now. So on here, if you right click in any of these window or any of the AI windows, you see we have the segments and now the all segment has been added. So you don't need to be looking at each one of the, the individual AI channels. You can grab it all from the Omni, which is bringing them all in. So that's a new piece of uh, functionality. All right, let's see what else we got. Any other questions here? Let's see. A ton of YouTubers. Hold on. So you're saying that um, you got an email from Trade Ideas saying why this software should not be used to day trade. Okay, I don't. I'd love to see that email. This is really a personal thing, folks. This is um, how you trade and the longevity of how you hold your positions, how you position size yourself. This is all a very personal thing. There's no one way to trade. There's no one right way to establish a position. Uh, this, is a, this is a very, very personal endeavor that everybody needs to find their own way. Um, that's why it's such an incredibly difficult game for people to, to be successful in. You know, to be totally honest with you, if, if you had 100 people that decided that they wanted to participate in the market, they wanted to trade stocks for a living and make money doing it, you're probably going to be, I would be impressed to see 10% of the people be successful doing it. And that's if you're just doing it full time, that's all you're going to do to try to make a living. It's a very difficult endeavor. What I have found that's a lot more um, successful for people is that they don't throw away their day job to learn this technique and this tool. So it's, it's really important that, one, you know who you are, you know what kind of capital you have to work with, and you have realistic ideas uh, with how you're going to approach this. So, no, I mean, it, be careful if you day trade. Be careful if you hold overnight. That's all. I, I don't think that we would – I day trade. I swing trade. I invest. I think you should, it's a good idea to be able to have the repertoire of all of those because the markets – the market's not always a swing market. The market's not always an investing market. I mean, maybe over a certain period of time it is. Uh, and some days it's better not to uh, uh, participate if, if the feeling's not right. So, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I don't necessarily agree. <laughs> So uh, Wally, you're asking about auto trading your own price alerts. Certainly possible. I, that's not on the immediate uh, roadmap, roadmap because we want to make sure that we're, we're notifying those. But um, I do envision a day when your price alerts will be able to have conditional orders attached to them. It's like right now, you know, if I if I wanted to make these executable, it would just be something where you would get a price alert and then you would get into the trade and. That's not always the best way to approach uh, getting into a position, but I can absolutely see using these price alerts as your initial foray into putting some type of order out there. Maybe it's a um, 
a, you know, maybe it's a stop limit order that you're putting out there based upon some action that was just triggered. And, and I do see the software moving in that direction. We also are, are pretty close with respect to, I don't want to say pretty close from a perspective of a time frame, but within Brokerage Plus, you know, we're developing our paper trading. So the nice thing about that is you're going to get comfortable or be able to get comfortable with transacting inside of the paper trading Brokerage Plus. It'll make your transition uh, to the live Brokerage Plus incredibly, incredibly easy. This is a, so this is Brokerage Plus, what I'm showing you right here. This is the mechanism that that we have to be able to execute trades directly. So for instance, if I bring in this window over here and I right click on a position or on a, on a symbol, I can bring in this trade, that symbol, and I have a variety of different predefined order types uh, that'll go to market. And these predefined order types are uh, orders that I put together, I define, I decide, you know, am I going to trade this with say 100 shares or am I gonna trade this with say a 5,000 um, equivalent dollar value of that. Or what I really love doing is this uh, risk-based stop. You know, maybe I only want to risk $50 in that trade. So it knows where my stop loss is and will position size me accordingly so that if in fact I was to get stopped out, that's the value that I'm going to lose. And like for instance, today when I was trading some of the Holly signals, it wasn't very aggressive at all. If you can go into it and you have the ability to edit it, and I think I was just risking $23 based upon, you know, the stop loss. So very, very little risk at all. And then you have the ability to find how you want to enter into that, into that position. And are you doing it through a limit, a limit delta, a market order? Uh, how long do you want to keep that out there? So those are the, the ways that you can define it. And then I think there was another one today, AEP, which is one that if I bring it up on the chart, you can see here that I got stopped out of AEP. I bought it here, got stopped out. I had the re-entry set up for my longs, not my shorts. So if something happened to get stopped out that was a long trade, then I had it set up to get me back in if it crosses the threshold, the halfway threshold between the stop and the original entry price. And that one worked out okay. I mean, it would have been nice to get out of it a little earlier, but um. You know, that's that's how that works. And so you can automate your Holly. And then you can also, in addition to this is where you set up your orders for the right click menu. This is where you can also set up an automated strategy. So develop a strategy. Anytime a signal occurs in there, it's going to automatically buy that for you or sell that for you and manage this stop and get you out on a certain time frame. So that's kind of the three different functions of Brokerage Plus. It's a pretty powerful tool. So trade of the week, trade of the week. I think I just saw a question about trade of the week. So trade of the week, I have um, Steve Gomez is in charge of trade of the week, and he has a variety of different uh, trade ideas windows that have been configured to his liking. Um, one of them is AI in nature, other ones are top lists, and he uses those windows to curate and to decide um, what he feels should be the trade of the week. So it's basically using uh, human, with technology and combining the two. Ah, so, okay, so Barry was telling me that's where um, uh, Steve was indicating that this may not be a, a great week to, I, I, I don't know what he said, but this is where he may have commented on that. And I think that, you know, if you pull up, let's just pull up the spiders. I could have pulled up SPX here, but if you pull up the spiders and you just look at that daily chart, what you see is just tremendous volatility. So you have to be aware of the water that you're stepping into. You have to know, are there piranhas? Are there sharks in there? Is it hot? Is it cold? This is a very volatile market. And I think that was the genesis of that, that commentary. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Barry. Apparently it's just been canceled because of uh, our open house, but okay. So right now, Mark is asking what brokers can be used with Brokerage Plus. Right now, it is just interactive brokers, um, but we are really close in, in solidifying another arrangement uh, with another uh, broker dealer. And again, this is the way that we approach things. We're, we're still modifying the software, um, specifically Brokerage Plus, and it would just be exponentially more difficult to have multiple people that we're connected to while we're doing this type of development. So our plan was to get this thing up to a point where we're extremely comfortable 
there's still some more features we're putting in. But once we've achieved that level, we do see opening this up to a variety of more brokers, uh, which is where this little connection area is going to have a variety of different drop downs depending upon who your broker is. So I'm getting all the, <laughs> so Steve is basically um, the guy that curates that trade of the week. And he's saying that his trade of the week are swing ideas and that you shouldn't be using those ideas for day trading ideas. But I would say that that doesn't necessarily mean that that's not a stock that could be day traded. He's just giving you some rationalization and some explanation in that commentary for the trade of the week. So that's, maybe we can put that one to bed. All right, so let me show you, I think um, we have a few more minutes. Let's bring in a strategy here where I can illustrate the odds maker. Hmm, I didn't bring it. Let me grab it from my other account. Give me one second, folks. See how quick I can get into the back office. I could do multiple things at once. I'd talk to you at the same time, but I can't. So, all right, let's right click, copy link address. All right, early morning riser. So this is a strategy that's looking for some type of uh, crossing above a resistance level. It's got a variety of different filters in here. I think one of the filters, let's just go to time. So this one's only trading for the first 45 minutes of the market with all these different filters on it. So let's see what happens as we uh, run the back test on that. So again, this is where if I didn't have that filter in the software that said don't trade the first five minutes and don't trade anything after the first 45, then I really wouldn't need to do this, uh, uh, these sliders right here. But this lets me know the time frame that this could possibly initiate a trade. We're going to hold it for 30 minutes. And we're going to put in a profit target of a dollar, and we're going to use the value of a smart stop. Every every stock has a different value of a smart stop depending on its volatility, its relative volume, and its range for the day. Uh, then we get to the advance. This is going to go back and test 45 trading days, and let's just go ahead and simulate it. So now it's going back and it's looking at had I bought every instance of that signal, how would I have done over the period of time that I tested? So it's an okay strategy. I don't know if it's a great strategy, but it allows me to show you some of the metrics here that, that do make sense. When you're looking at a profit factor, you want that value to be over one. A profit factor of two means that the sum total of all my winning trades is twice that of my losing trades. So it's sum total of winning trades over the sum total of your losing trades, and that's your, your ratio that you get. So that's not bad. Um, the total trades in the sample set over 45 trading days were 94. So about two trades a day on average. The average winner was 33 cents. The average loser is 24 cents. Here's the return. I started with $50,000. I would need $75,000, so a little margin. That would have been fine. Um, I would have been able to implement this. I can put in my commission, whatever that may be. Enter that. It'll adjust it on the chart. So I have my top line number uh, without commission, with commission, and then with slippage. Um, or you can, you know, slippage is also commission per share. So you can have both of those factors here. And this lets you know that we started off with 50, we ended with 50,783. So it looks like we made $783 out of this strategy, trading $5,000 um, per clip on that. Again, I don't know that it's something that I would, would, would implement, but you want to see it positive. You want to see it going upward. The real power of the odds maker, and it's really the, the functionality that the AI uses and it doesn't use the interface of the odds maker, but it uses the, the mathematical techniques involved. And the optimization tab is really cool because if you look at price, for instance, it takes, I, I made it so that we're looking for stocks between two and $80, right? So what it's doing, it's taking all of my trades that occurred in that time period and breaking it into $10 intervals. I could break it into $5 intervals and I can see 
the stocks that signaled between 15 and $20, there were three of them. 20 and 25, there were eight. And then it breaks down, you know, how did they do? The win percentage, the average, you know, what didn't do well? So that's just price. And you can do the same thing with time. You know, when should you be trading? Let's make our interval, well, five minutes is good because it's a pretty small uh, window of opportunity. So I can see how that is. But the, again, the real power is these are these other filters where I have access to all the filters inside of trade ideas. For instance, change one minute. So if we make this say five cents, so now we've broken this down into five cent increments and you can see all the stocks that were triggered, how much did they change over one minute and how did they do respectively? Not much there that I'm looking for, but as you start to scroll down, something like this, change 10 minute dollars. Well, if I wanted to say, I don't want it to change more than 90 cents or 89 cents over 10 minutes, then I can just right click here and I'll set my max value of 10 minutes to 89. It's going to go into the configuration. It's going to set that up. And then if I run the odds maker again, I'm not going to see, I'm not going to see these guys here. Again, there's only two trades. You, you don't necessarily want to exclude that, but if you come to something like this and you see, you know, a whole bunch of trades right here and they're all red, it, it's telling you something. And you can use that information to adjust your strategy accordingly. So it's a real art to building a strategy. It's a real art to creating something that has some durability over time. Uh, but these are the tools that allow you to really kind of uncover the mathematics behind it. So Paul, you, you can trade using our software, but you do need to have a broker. We don't, we don't hold your capital um, and you're not trading uh, with trade ideas. You can use our software as a conduit to get to your broker. And in this case right now, it's interactive brokers. All right, guys, do you have any other questions? Any Anything you want me to talk about before I kind of come back into the PowerPoint and wind it up? All righty. So let's just wrap this thing up here, folks. I appreciate you hanging with me. It got a little more technical today than, than some of our other ones. Um, but I, I noticed when Scott did the poll that we had a lot of people that were active subscribers. A lot of times it's half and half and I have to kind of walk a fine line, but you know, it's good to know some of these nuances uh, with the software. All right, so guys, we are having a test drive. Uh, I think you're able to log in uh, Friday after the market uh, using your credentials. Scott will correct me if I'm wrong there, but it gives you an opportunity to, to take trade ideas out for a test drive. If you've never used trade ideas before, you're welcome to use it uh, in that fashion. If you are a subscriber and you don't have access to premium and you want to see what some of the additional uh, features and functionality include, uh, that this would be for you as well. We like to keep it every quarter. We don't we don't offer uh, free trials of our software. It's a pretty um, comprehensive platform. So as a result of that, we want to make sure that we have the support staff at your disposal uh, during these test drives. And so we make sure that that that's available for you. We're a software as a service uh, subscription. Uh, we've broken it down here into the the daily rate. Uh, for both our standard and our premium and we do offer prepayments so if you pay for the year there's a little bit of a discount that we offer you uh, for that we do have a discount code right now summer of ai i do believe it all needs to be entered in, in all capitals for it to work but that's going to give you 15 percent off either of your monthly or of your yearly either the standard or the premium whatever you prefer to decide we have a trading room Barry moderates that trading room every single day. Um, well, not every single day, but for the most part, uh, he's there and he's there, I think it's about a half hour before the market opens. And he's there, I think a half hour before the market closes. And so it's a, it's a great trading room. You're using our technology in real time. A lot of great traders in there. They're all trading uh, real money. Uh, so they're, they're, it's not just a game out there. So it's, I, I really encourage you all to take a look. You don't need to be a subscriber uh, to participate or to ingest any of the information. So it's free to everybody. So we highly encourage you to take a look and stop in. We do a podcast every Friday. That's my uh, 
My partner, Dan, is usually uh, leading that with uh, our associate, Jamie, and it's uh, usually a nice, non-structured discussion of the direction that we're heading, maybe some of the past week's events, uh, but it's pretty entertaining. We've got a new ebook series that's out. You can get to it by going to trade-ideas.com forward slash setup. So we'll deliver those right to your inbox by going to that link. And guys, we're extremely easy to get a hold of, whether it be through Twitter, Facebook, might not be as easy to call us, but you can always leave a message if nobody answers. Truly the best way to, to communicate with our staff and our team is through our email address, info at trade-ideas.com. So let me take a quick gander back here. All right, I think we're all good. Scott, did I miss anything? I think that takes care of it, guys. Remember the um, test drive starts Monday. Recommend signing up for it early so you can get access before the weekend. Uh, just trade-ideas.com slash test drive if you want to check out premium. Um, thanks, everyone. We have the recording. Oh, hey, Scott, don't, don't, kill it. don't kill it just yet. Let me do something real quick here. Um, I want to answer Law's question, and he's asking what are the best um, AI strategies. I, I don't know if I can give a great answer to that, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you some of the ones that I like real quick. All right, I like Tailwind. I think Tailwind is a, is a fantastic strategy, although it had an interesting call today that I didn't really agree with. I need to go back in and take a look at some of the, the volume considerations. But Tailwind, I think, is a phenomenal strategy. It usually gets you in on a pullback on a stock that happens to be um, bullish in, in, in movement. Um, Mighty Mouse and Little Big Guy are two great strategies for trading lower price stocks. They actually tend to be nice swing strategies because you're getting into uh, this position relatively on a beaten up mentality of that stock. So it's been beaten up, but so your stop is relatively tight. You're not taking a lot of risk, but giving you some great opportunities for those. Uh, Sunrise movers on a bullish day is a really nice strategy. I like that a lot um, and bullish pullback. So I think those are kind of my favorite, but uh, you know, you just have to experience it and they all kind of deliver a different flair. Float on is wonderful too, because that's looking for stocks that have a low float. And a lot of times when you get something like that, that starts to pick up, there's some tremendous um, uh, action, some tremendous momentum that moves through it. So, all right, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck to you. Yeah, thanks everyone. Have a good one.